Hello, my name is Frederick Bertley, President and CEO of COSI. COSI stands for the Center of Science and Industry. I'm going to be speaking wearing two hats. One is the CEO and President of a Science Museum, um, and the other one is I am an immunologist. Um, and not only is my PhD in immunology, but specifically in viral immunopathogenesis, and specifically around retroviruses, which coronaviruses are. So I actually, you know, I'm a museum kind of administrator, but I also know a lot about that. And that's one of the reasons why I joined the Realm Group. I'm really privileged to be part of the Realm Project. I think um, it really was a, a necessary set of work to just allow the larger library and museum community to understand what's relevant and what's not relevant with, with the viruses and how we can as a as a field think about being smart by being open and what we can do and most importantly what's fact versus fiction the changes that we made at cosi didn't necessarily follow the cadence and changes that other institutions were making because i just knew a little more about the science of what this bug was about as opposed to the sound bites that were out there on television I'm saying that because it became pretty clear to the scientists, immunologists, and virologists that this is an airborne virus. So right off the bat, very early on, COSI invested in photohydroionization technology. So HVAC technology that really filters the air and specifically sterilizes the air, killing viruses, of course, but also bacteria, other parasites, Etc. And so that was our big double down at the beginning. And that's what we knew would make a difference if we could open. Now, the optics of everything, of course, we were sanitizing like crazy. Of course, we had our team coming around spraying everything, wiping it down every 15 minutes, etc. Because people want to see that. But we knew in terms of really being diligent around the health and safety security about our guests and our team members that, you know, first and foremost is, is that. Then we were going to, of course, have mask wearing. And of course, we're practicing social distancing. Most culture institutions hover around 50% earned revenue. COSI operates for the last 50 years at 75 to 80% earned revenue. When we closed our doors on March 13th, it wasn't a slow decline in revenue. Okay, we have some time to figure stuff out. It, it fell off a cliff. And I say that to say I had, I had to lay off a significant number of team members. So now you got the staff that's remaining, they got survival skills. So there's that aspect, right? So you got to nurture that from an HR perspective, make sure they're not feeling that it's their fault, not feeling guilty about it. So what we did is we really doubled down on the health and, and wellness of our team members. That that was first and foremost. So I activated a special HR, HR kind of triage department that really their job was to consistently, you know, make sure as best as possible, our team members who are on board have all the supports they can need. So just really being thoughtful around the, the, the human, um, the, the human kind of empathetic um, lens first. Then after that was okay, well, can you do your job at home? <laughs> you know? All right. So again, we're going HR, we're like, you know, as long as you can do like 80% of your job, you know, reasonably well, we're good with that. Let's work with you on that. So so the first thing was was their well-being as an individual. The second thing was their professional capacity. Can we create a micro environment where they're working from home through Teams, through Zoom, through whatever, that they're gonna feel productive on their themselves? And then bigger picture, do we really see the productivity nesting well with, with the other um, team members, et cetera? However, one of the other things I did with the team is I said, look, yes, we have a philanthropic spirit and yes, we're going to fundraise, but we cannot fundraise out of this. Um, why? Because it's not just happening to COSI alone. It's happening to the universe. And so every nonprofit, every institution that depends on philanthropy is going to be doing the same thing. You're dealing with the same denominator of a pool of money. It's not going to work. There's not enough money going around. So I immediately told the team, listen, we'll still fundraise the best we can, but we are going to double down on ensuring people see value in what we offer as a science center. Now, the cool thing here is while we weren't anticipating a pandemic, we just inked our strategic plan. The challenge for the strategic plan was what would COSI be, i.e. what would a science museum be if it didn't have bricks and motor? So obviously online, right, which is hard to compete, but basically community, partnerships, relationships, impact. And so we actually had this baked in and started this in January, thinking of all these cool things we could do that were independent of our building. So back to the pandemic hits, March 13th, we closed our doors. We weren't starting at ground zero. We already had the juice, like the whole team knew, wait a minute, 
there are a lot of things we can do. We believe science is everywhere. We believe science is, is for everyone. That's part of our mission. Well, let's be everywhere and let's be for everyone. So we doubled down and created all these new innovative programs, everything from, yes, we did try to put stuff on the web and, you know, we call it Coastside Connects Live, a whole universe of, of free stuff, available videos and different interactions online, which is great. But again, it's a very competitive set. But then really pulled ourselves out from the rest of the pack by having these hands-on kits that were next level quality hands-on kits. What do I mean by that? Each kit had five different experiments. The five different experiments were correlated in our case to the Ohio Science Learning Standards and to the National Next Generation Science Standards. And we started in, in Columbus, went through Franklin County, then we went through all 80 counties through the whole state of Ohio. Now we're in Tennessee, West Virginia, Kentucky. We're going to Texas. Now that we opened, it's great. People are coming back. We'll see where that levels off, but people have been coming back nicely, so that's great. But all these other things we did in the past 18 months are still there and we're continuing to ideate and iterate on. So COSI post-pandemic looks very different than COSI pre-pandemic. COSI pre-pandemic was a building, an institution. It's loved in Ohio. Go and visit it. Have a good time. COSI post-pandemic is a concept that includes visit the physical, you know, come to the mothership for your capsule experience. But there's all these other experiences you're having out there that are not curated by Google, not through Google, not curated by Facebook, but oh, there's this little small place in Columbus that's doing these really cool things. Oh my gosh, that's COSI and I'm in Texas and I'm having a COSI experience. So that kind of sums up what our what our new steady state will be. The lessons learned for COSI, like we could not have achieved this just us having a cool idea. We had to work with different partners to really implement these different types of programs. So partnership is a great way to, to sustain, you know, sustain anything right? because it's no longer just you you got a, a support network of folks kind of all rowing in the same direction the second thing which is really critical for the non-for-profit world is what the pandemic did for us and i know it did for so many other institutions is it forced us to be not just a little more efficient infinitely more efficient we can still be a nonprofit from a stack tax status, you definitely, of course, are still a cultural institution about elevating civilization and doing all the great stuff that's needed for society, but you can operate way better, way faster, way smarter, way more efficient, way more cost-effective than we traditionally do.